Peace, family. This is the Draco Maniac Podcast, and I'm Ayapo Yapo, the HDIC, that is, the head Draco Maniac in charge. And we're here to have conversations on how to get off this plantation. Now, I tend not to talk about what everybody else talks about, because with the exception of separation and the Fukushima disaster and the threat of the radiation, which is a very real threat uh, to each and every living creature on the planet, everything else becomes just so much background noise to me. That doesn't, uh, that's not to, you know, throw shade to anyone or anything like that. It's just that um, in light of everything else, I just find, I just find some of the stuff to be extraneous. That's me. Excuse me. That's just me. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure that you listeners are listening to the Drapedomaniac podcast on doiamedia.com. You are, right? Now, you know, I'm always going to be talking about separation for our people. And right now there's much talk, speculation, opinions, and, uh, you know, about what our people should do within the system of white supremacy. However, as far as I'm concerned, any solution for our people that does not include separation is no solution at all. And that's just how I, that's just how I see it. You know, I explained in the last, uh, Drape the Maniac podcast that the fact that the government which is completely bought and paid for by banks, corporations, and other big donors, by the way. They don't even pay attention in any real or substantial way uh, to even its own white people who are the de facto beneficiaries of the system of white supremacy. And if that's the case, and to those who are being intellectually honest, uh, they'll have to admit that it definitely is, then why, oh why, would we as a people... Black people expect the government to do anything even resembling right by us when they can't even move to do right by their own. That's, that's, that's absolute madness to me. That's, that mystifies me how we can, we can believe that. That's like, uh, that's, that's like seeing a company, a company that has absolutely no regard for its workers whatsoever, but you somehow expect that company to make concessions for you and you don't even work there. That's a, that's madness. It's delusional madness to me. Now, again, like I said before, I tend to try not to talk about what everybody else is talking about. But of course, you know, there's the subject of the coronavirus. The coronavirus pandemic, whether you believe it's real or not, has definitely changed the way the society and individuals move in the United States and worldwide. One thing this chaos is making very apparent is not only how corrupt and inept this government is when it comes to taking care of its citizens, which they're experts at taking care of themselves and other millionaires and billionaires. They're experts at that. But also the degree of indifference those in power feel when it comes to the general population. The government's supposed to be for and by the people, but it's, it isn't hard to see that those in positions of power feel it's exactly the other way around. Each day, every day, I watch political commentary and other news from the Beltway, but as I've explained ad nauseum, I don't watch it because I believe any of it's real. I watch it the same, you know, for the same reason and the same way that I watched um, all the um, Marvel Cinematic Universe movies leading up to Endgame. Did I believe any of that actually happened? You know, of course not. And that is basically how I feel about the political system, especially in the United States. It's all political theater to me and purely for entertainment purposes. Now we, meaning black people, want so desperately to believe that uh, we can somehow get the government to pay attention to us and shore up our position so that we can have a piece of the American dream that we have fooled ourselves into empowering the very system that uses, abuses, and maligns us, and ultimately seeks our destruction. 
when I watched uh, the black voters, this was a, a few days ago, the, like Tuesday, I think, when they had the primary. When I watched the black voters in different states going to the polls to cast a vote for Sanders, who made no secret of the fact that he's not for reparations for our people, or for Biden, who played his part in mass incarcer- in the mass incarceration of our people, right? As I watched them, those black voters go and vote for either one of them, I shook my head and I was profoundly saddened by that. If the pandemic is what it's claimed to be, and for the purposes of my point, it doesn't really matter whether it is or it isn't. These black people were literally, literally willing to risk their lives to vote for one of these two people who have absolutely no regard for them. And that's how brainwashed our people are. That's how brainwashed. Oh my God. Because of the coronavirus, the fears of many people are losing their jobs, various goods, like especially hand sanitizer and toilet paper, are flying off the shelves. Public water systems are starting to back up. Because people have had to resort to using paper towels in lieu of toilet paper. Did you know that? (laughs) People who are not panicking are still having to run out and stock up on things because of the people who are panicking. And the people of the U.S. are having to look to questionable leadership on both sides of the aisle for help. As a side note, take a hard look at the press conferences Uh, uh, both for the Republicans and the Democrats. And how many black faces do you see? Right, nearly none. And those who you do see tend to be thoroughly indoctrinated, wittingly or unwittingly, and they are tools of the system of white supremacy. So they're basically useless to our people and likely to add, and likely they're there just as window dressing. Okay, if they're present at all. The talk that they floated around, or the talk that they're floating around right now, is about every American getting a UBI. That's universal, universal basic income. I think it's universal basic income. Uh, and that check would be anywhere from a thousand, some I've heard as high as two thousand dollars or something in between. And some of the figures I've heard have been as low as six hundred dollars based on mean te- means testing. Or means test. That's, you know, and, and that's a bunch of crap in itself. But the problem is that with all this talk, which is holding up the final action that would put checks into the hands of Americans, is being discussed in order to qualify people with the lowest incomes, you know, to get the least, you know, to get the least money, that, which, you know, the people with the, who make the least are the ones who should get the most money because they'll need it the most. It's, 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 it's ass backward. I was trying not to say it, but that's a, you know, it's ass backward. And this, while corporation, you know, while corporate bailouts are being pushed through the bureaucracy at lightning speed and with no strings attached, but you got people who aren't making any money and they have to be means tested while they they can't find enough ways to give Jeff Bezos more money. It's it, <laughs> devils. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, who are the ones holding up the show? It's primarily Democrats. If you don't believe it, research it. The same Democrats, okay, the same Democrats, there's some of the people, there's some of our people are looking to, to, you know, to work on our behalf for reparations. And they're the ones that are holding up poor people getting money. It's, it, it would be it, it'd be laughable if it weren't so sad. Really. So what can we do right now? You know, I'm always talking. What can we do right now? Because I'm always talking about separating. As I've said and I keep saying, we must separate and adopt a mindset and let go of the things that that that, that hold us to this system. I had very, I, I had, and this is, uh, I'm getting personal now. I had a lot, I had various toys 
and a goal of acquiring even more. That used to be one of my goals. And then a while ago, I came to my senses and realized that the sports car, my video collection, and all the baubles I had, had nothing to do with my character or well-being or my peace of mind. I realized that, uh, that what I wanted was freedom. After I came to that realization, my wife and I, my beautiful wife and I, strategically started, re my beautiful black wife, and I strategically started reducing our debt to the point that we're now debt free. Can you believe that? I, it, it, it's, it's, it's such a weird feeling. I'm always talking to her about it. I'm like, we're, we're debt free. And, you know, I got, I got rid of the car. And let me tell you something. I, I love that car. I had a freaking name for it. Okay. I, I love that car. You know, <laughs> I got rid of it. You know, if this had been a few years ago, I thought that I could not do without that car. I loved riding around in it. I loved the power of it. It's this beautiful, it's a beautiful Mustang. You know, it's a beautiful Mustang. Um, and I got rid of it. Powerful car. And I got so many compliments on it. True story. True story. I once cut a guy off in that car. This was like when I, around the time I first got, cut this guy off in the car. Long story short, he pulled up in front of me and stopped and he gets out of his car. This is a white guy gets out of his car and he's asking me if I wanted to fight. You know, he just said it kind of like matter of factly, like, like, you know, you want to fight. But before he got, before he went into all that, my right hand to God. He got out of his car. He, he said, he said, you want to fight? And they looked at my car. He said, nice car, by the way. But, uh, you want to fight? I mean, even this guy, even this guy that wanted to fight me and was upset with me couldn't help but compliment this car. It had like this glass roof, everything. It just, this, it, it was just a beautiful car. Anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent, but you know, I, I did. I got, I got rid of the car. Thought I couldn't do without it. Um, but now I have a nice, uh, a nice drivable point A to point B car that's paid for as well as other things that I've released from, you know, from th that has released me from this system. I continue to adjust my mindset and I saw that I, I, you know, I, I could have nice things because I like, I like nice things. Everybody, you know, most people at least uh, like to have nice things. But I didn't need to have the newest, latest, better, best. You know, we we live modestly and we have everything we need and then some. You know, but the most important thing is that even in the midst of this crisis, you know, like the one the world's experiencing right now, my wife and I are consistently talking about how blessed we are that we don't have bills pressing down on us. Just the rent, car insurance, you know, a couple incidentals. That aren't expensive, you know, what pretty much what everybody else has. And while everyone else, uh, you know, got so happy about the prospect of receiving a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a month. And I openly admit, I shoot, I like that too. I like that. I like that money. I'll take it. But if that deal somehow doesn't, you know, go through or go sideways, we won't be hurting. You know, and I, I won't be, I won't be like real disappointed. Cause I don't, I, I don't need it. I mean, money always comes in handy. I mean, I'm not crazy, but you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not counting on it and it's not a big deal. And that's not to brag. This is to show what part it, it like a little part of what separation looks like. When we get money, there's nothing, you know, there's not this big urge to go out and spend it on some big, fancy, expensive thing, uh, you know, that we're trying to impress someone with. Or that we feel we need so badly. You know, we're unhooked from that. And what did we get in return? Peace. A good night's sleep. Not worrying about how to pay for this or pay for that or this getting shut off or somebody coming and taking this or looking out the window and the car's gone and all that. You know, we got, we got peace in exchange for all the junk. And I, I love my peace. The other phase 
is a sense where, you know, we aren't caught up in materialism. Uh, we're working our way loose from the rest of the system and what is conditioned, you know, to tell us and what it has conditioned, you know, conditioned us, you know, how it has conditioned us for years. You know, I don't mind when I see someone with a nicer car than mine or better electronics or a bigger house or nicer clothes. I care about my peace and a good night's sleep. There is no price tag that you can put on that. You know, separate from materialism, separate from placing your hope in a government and a system that has proven to be hostile toward you. Separate from the foods that it uses to weaken and destroy you. Separate from the mindset that makes you want to consume. Separate from the lie of the American dream. Embrace separation. Embrace peace. Embrace it. And I know that, you know, it's one of those type of things that depending on where you are financially and, and psychologically, everything, it could be one of these things that's easier said than done. I'm not saying it's like this, you know, this simple thing that you can just snap your fingers and do. This was a process for me. This was a process for, you know, for my, for, you know, for me and my wife together. Um, you know, it's, it's like I'm, I'm a vegetarian now. It start. it was little, I came little by little. I didn't just one day, I just stopped eating meat altogether. I, it was something that I learned to do gradually. And each day I'm separating even more and more from, you know, the, from the, the, uh, the satanic American diet, you know, that's killing everybody. I'm not totally loose from it. But I'm working my way loose. So there's so many points at which we can separate and need to separate. It's not about going back to, you know, the continent, you know, the motherland. It's not about running and going someplace else. If you can get free in your mind and then start freeing yourself little by little where you are, your life We'll start to smooth out. Angela and I are, are living proof of this. It just starts to it starts to smooth out. It doesn't be become just perfect, and you just don't have any problems at all or anything like that. But it does smooth out, and you can sleep at nice and it's at nice. You can sleep at night, and it's nice, <laughs> and and it's just more peaceful you just feel more at peace and there is again like i said before there is no price tag you can put on that okay and so um that's pretty much all i have to say about that i will say this though uh, just in light of what's going on with the the pandemic um keep this in mind spring and summer are coming spring is actually here um you know, first day of spring, I think, was yesterday. And a lot of, a lot happens with the weather and with the earth during these times. And, and happens all the time. Just keep in mind that there are, stir, there are states where we get earthquakes, brush fires, tornadoes, floods, you name it. They're just different natural disasters. And we have to remember that these disasters are not going to stop happening because of a pandemic or a present crisis that's happening. So you don't want to get caught in a position where you're dealing with all these things at the same time, you know, so just make sure that you're prepared. And that doesn't mean hoard. It just means that you make sure that you've taken proper precautions for you and your family so that you're not caught dealing with the chaos of a pandemic Radiation exposure, you know, which is, which is real, but nobody wants to talk about it. Research it, research it, research it, and stop eating anything that comes out the ocean. But, you know, so that you aren't dealing with, uh, you know, the chaos of a pandemic, radiation exposure, and, and a natural disaster on top of that with no preparation at all. Okay. Just keep that in mind. It takes, it, it doesn't take as much as you might think to prepare. It's like eating an elephant. You eat it one bite at a time, 
when you go to the store, maybe pick up one extra thing that you might need, batteries, flashlight, whatever. And, and you know, like I said, you don't have to hoard anything. But, you know, have some candles, whatever is appropriate for your area. You know, you know what goes on in your area, whether you have a brush fire or you're more susceptible in your area to, um, you know, have uh, tornadoes in that area or whatever. So that's that's about it. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this Drake to Maniac podcast. I also want to thank all those who really do, you know, take the time to listen, to drop in, to comment. I know I haven't been answering the comments lately. I need to get caught on, caught up on that. Uh, still working on the magazine. Plus, I'm, I have a couple other projects. Um, they're kind of secret projects, uh, but they are for family. Uh, but I do want to thank all of you who listen, all of you who even watch on YouTube and all the subscribers, uh, each and every one of you are very important to me. And I'm so grateful and thankful that you take the time to listen and to comment. And I genuinely, genuinely appreciate that. Thank you so much. And with that, this is Ayabo Yapa, the HDIC. That is the head Drake Domaniac in charge. And as always, family, I will see you on the run. And thank you again for listening to the Drake Domaniac podcast. Tune in next week at doiamedia.com. D O E A I A M E D I A dot C O M. And again, we'll catch you on the run. Peace.